so I, uh, I was playing in the background some some of the improvisations that I was messing around with. Uh, this is this was the main source of a lot of the audio that you heard was an, an iwi uh, electronic wind instrument. Uh, the older version of it was an analog synthesizer, but you didn't actually hear that at all this time, unlike in Leipzig where that's all that was driving it. This time we're using the uh, Yamaha VL70, uh, which is the VL stands for virtual lead. It's rather old technology. A it, it, curious instrument that has a had the longest uh, longest run of, of, of for any instrument that was made. No changes in the specs for the longest period of time in the digital age. Uh, and it's because it was so ingenious and so well designed for use with the wind controller. They just marketed it with their WX7 and 5 and 4, whatever all those. Anyway, it's a really good, does really good physical modeling. Uh, the bass clarinet <coughs> glitches and, you know, create multiphonics if you uh, overblow it a certain way. Brass instruments will crack notes. You can, you know, crack notes in the same way that a horn player cracks notes. It's that realistic. So that's what I was using uh, for a lot of this piece. And so I'll just give you a little flavor of what it sounds like. because it's going to be processed a lot. And so in the, uh, in the piece, uh, that's actually what's driving all of the audio that you hear. In, 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 uh, it turned out I liked it better that way than having a clarinet player drive it uh, because I liked the ambiguity of, wait a minute, that was an anticipation. The clarinet hasn't played that yet. Not quite, and, and, the, and it's, so there's this slack and this sort of hall of mirrors sort of thing that I actually kind of liked. So basically, uh, what you were hearing is is all of the all of the clarinetty kinds of sounds were uh, driven by this virtual lead instrument running through a bunch of Kima processes and play the bass clarinet the things that sound like bass clarinet lines. That's me on the Ewe playing. Uh, playing those lines way out of the register of the virtual lead, which gave it that sort of fuzzy, breathy sound. Um, I, I'll play, so I used a, a little bit of just standard delay, two couple of simple delays, and then a very awkward sounding at times, but then, um, yeah, let's skip those. Several versions of that then get run through um, through a granular synthesis patch that where the um, where the delays become more scattered. So the delay in here, the grain duration, can you see the where my cursor is? It's like that's a ridiculously long grain for granular synthesis, but it turns it into a sort of chaotic, somewhat unpredictable delay which I find really interesting, and I use some of that in Leicester for this piece of driven by the, the Ewe and Tyron. Um, so that's a big part of this, and then some other things that are going on is just um, a low droning kind of a thing where I'm playing that same instrument but way out of the range and granular uh, synthesis process that I don't we don't want to skip that. No. But um, here's a, so this is just that instrument, just me playing lines and as I felt they appropriate in the piece, I'm just playing and recording them and I don't even want to tell you how many takes I had to take made to get it to fit exactly the way I wanted to and not miss notes or anything like that. Um, I, I want to do another short little demo here of If I mute the solo, this is using granular synthesis, and I, this is a, something that I solved in the middle of this that I wish I'd solved a long, long time ago because I was always running against it. If you do granular synthesis uh, and use the granular cloud, the sound cloud, sample cloud, 
to uh, do the pitch shifting, you end up with... But if you run it through the pitch shift first, and then just then so that the, the uh, sound cloud is just is on default frequency, and it, it's it's got an, it colors the sound a little bit, but in a way that I found useful, and it doesn't. There's no, there's no clicks. <laughs> you remember I I know I was asking you about that at, at times, uh, and it was just hard for me to find a way to deal with it. So I did. So do the trans. If you want to be doing unison and oct or octaves uh, that are lower or even higher, it helps if you if you if you're not too concerned with the timbre thing exactly the same. If you, you can do the transposition, and it, I think it'll work. I think you'll like it. Um, in the second movement, I solved a couple of uh, <laughs> things that I thought were might be worth saving, and I was. Let, let me just show you this Euclidean instrument. So this is, uses a bunch of samples that I created on my very first encounter with bass player that I had never held one before. I started sampling it and the bass just got off the sounds and put them into a drum machine like environment and uh, could change, you know, all these different Euclidean rhythms are being driven. The one that was let me turn it up a little bit. Doesn't sound like all that much, but it's just uh, it really provided a nice chaotic sort of bass line in that in that piece. And I, I didn't play any of those notes in. I didn't play any of the notes of that rhythmic track. It was all all these sort of things like that. And in terms of how this, in terms of how this uh, piece evolved, it started out like with a tempo like this, very sort of ethno African sort of stuff. And then I started trying to write music for the clarinet player, and I found uh, I found uh, the the truism that uh, that from Dizzy Gillespie's experience. Uh, someone put a transcribed solo of, a, of, of Dizzy Gillespie in front of me and said, that's unplayable. And I found I, I, I found I could play along with this, but I couldn't transcribe it in a way that made any sense to someone trying to play it. It was just so intuitive and so, uh, it, yeah. So it, it, I, kept, I kept slowing it down, I kept slowing it down. Uh, Slower and slower it gets more and more funky. Right? And that bass line actually has enough command of what's going on. So, anyway, so that was fun. The other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about, the other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is. It sounds like a groove, it doesn't sound like a random. Yeah, it's totally random. This is, the bass you know, line. huh? The bass line is random. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This one was another one that I sort of, you know, just hacked away at until I got something close to what I wanted. So this is also random, but it's in, it's got the rhythms, but I, I don't know when it's going to change. I don't know when the accents are going to happen, but they're going to happen. And that happens in here. Oh, and this, I, I will point out this if you've, if you've been using the chopper to do uh, uh, to do your beats like this, if you go on for very long, they start getting out of sync. Um, and so Carla helped me. I was like, why are they getting out of sync? Carla sent me a bunch of prototypes I've got that uh, worked really well. Uh, I don't see them there now, never mind. But this was the one that I liked the most using the oscillator, and I don't even know if I can explain why it works, but it stays dead on in sync. But the key was finding, uh, you know, finding random numbers and the splitting the signal so that some of it goes, and that's really in your face in terms of the chop, 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 and just crossfade it with one that's more infrequent and with 
the original mm -hmm. uh, and put it all together and it's, it's got accents, it's got the rhythms and it's got the, the ghosting or, or the sort of steady state behind it that sort of smooths it out. So I did a number of different versions of that in different levels and so, and it can transpose. steady state uh, and one giving the accents and one giving the smooth smoothing it out um, yeah I, I think that's probably that's probably all I need to talk about if anyone has any questions you can ask me about it but I want to turn over this show to Carla as soon as possible <laughs>